Hey everybody, it's Thursday, <laughs> and hopefully you can hear me. I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm uh, good with the, with the um, soundboards this week, and I uh, forgot, forgot about that until I got back here this today. Uh, welcome everybody. Hey everybody, I want to thank you a really lot for all the emails I've gotten in the last day from my newsletter on Wednesday. Boy, I, uh, thank you so much. I, I'm going to write back to all of you who um, sent me an email about my newsletter, which was about me um, doing this for you guys, and I will never charge for this, um, and I will never charge for it. And I'm actually thinking about doing some Zoom classes um, for, for nothing. We're gonna do maybe some Zoom classes. I really love to mentor, and I'm paying it forward to my teachers, and so it's like, you doing good work is my my payback. So thank you so much for all the wonderful, wonderful um, emails you guys gave me. So today we're gonna be going out to, and I forgot who gave me these, I, it was either a Christina or a Judy, I don't remember, from Bagley. If you're online, please let me know. This is um, your beer this week. It's um, Interstate 94 West. It's from Minnesota. It's from a small town in Minnesota. Um, an IPA. Um, Coast Double IPA 94 West. Um, floral, citrus, pine, and dank. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> Let's try it. All right. And so I'll give it a nice pour. Look at that head on that. Oh, I actually get a good pour on that one. <laughs> so cheers, everybody. And again, thank you for all those emails. They were absolutely wonderful. Warm my heart when I'm um, here. You guys um, really love the, these um, videos. I'm so happy. So cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers. Mm, very citrusy. It's an IPA, so it's a little bit bitter, but um, not bad. I'm going to give this about an 8.5. So cheers, everybody, cheers. Put that aside here. And so today we're gonna be doing a, a scene. I'm gonna talk, show you how to use a hake brush um, in a way that I learned from John Selmanin and from John Lovett from Australia. And so I'm gonna show you how to use these things, um, the way they use them, basically. And they use them dry. And so I, I'm not sure I can do um, exactly how I was wanted to show you, but there, it's a great little, um, Great little thing. So I'll show you that. I think I showed it also on Saturday uh, or Sunday, last Sunday. I showed you, if anybody was watching last Sunday's or if you want to see that, it's on my Sunday, um, my Sunday paint along. Not paint along, but demo. <laughs> All right, let's go right away to our website. And for anybody who wants to know what my website is, it's beckerart.net or davidrbecker.com for anybody who's new here. And I always thank you people for um, everybody who actually has other people come to watch me. Um, that alone is enough payment, really. Um, you get people subscribing, that is wonderful. So davidrbecker.com or beckerart.net, everything I do is on there. Um, supplies, of course, is my water, Holbein watercolors. And I've still got my old palette. I'm trying to get this other palette made, but it just seemed to be impossible. And then my brushes, of course. And today we're not using masking fluid, but we're going to be using soft tape. I'm using some soft tape and, of course, our Stonehenge paper. Value study. Let's go right to our value study. And um, here we are. <laughs> and so um, I changed the colors on this a little bit because one day I'm going to show you how AI changes so many things with Photoshop now. I've used Photoshop most of my life. Uh, the life of Photoshop, I've used it um, in my when I was an illustrator for doing storyboards. But here, what I want you to show you is that this one is a lot about the color along with the value pattern. And so the water is all my dark. All the water is considered dark, even though it's middle tone. And same thing with the um, with the uh, lily pads. They're kind of in our light, even though they're middle tone. We're going to make them part of our light tone. So basically, the dark runs through here, right, and and the water, but also a little bit underneath each lily pad and underneath the flowers. So there's our dark lily pads, even though they're um, they are middle tone they're gonna be my light pattern. So if you squint your eye or just look at this black and white, you can kind of see that the light kind of comes through here, right? Almost a little bit like a like a backwards S almost in a way, you know, that's how we're gonna have our light. And again, the, the water, which is gonna be kind of a different color. So sometimes you can use that in your favor to use the color to help out you show your value pattern. And it's not so much the values, but the colors and also show a pattern. Again, always big, think big, think the big, huge things first. All right, let's go to our tabletop and get started here. So here's what I did this afternoon. 
And also, I, I was gonna change this in the photo to show you guys that I like making things dramatic and not looking like the photo. Um, recently in my live classes, I've been teaching that, that you are not painting a photo. You are not making it look like a photo. You don't even want to look like a photo. You, most of the beginners though, want it to look like the photo because the photo looks really good, right? Well, you want to make it look better than a photo and you want to make it look like a painting. And so that leaves you, so I think it makes it easier on you for one. And then you make it look like the beautiful painting that it is by following the rules I've been giving you by making things simple, getting your center of interest, making your value pattern. That all is part of making it look like a good painting and not like a good photo. We don't care about the photo unless you're a photorealist, then all bets are off and you need to make it look just like the photo. Then everything that you see in the photo needs to be exactly like that. And so if you are taking that kind of class, you know, from somebody who does that, like a Lynn Pratt who does beautiful, beautiful hyper-realism paintings, then you, you need to have the drawing perfect and actually draw everything like you see it in there. And um, you want to take their classes too because I cannot teach you that. Um, but I can teach you how to make this painting look like this photo, look like a beautiful watercolor painting because that's what we're doing. And my things here every week, we, we're taking our photographs as our reference material and we're making it a beautiful painting. So what did I do that's different is I put the sun like the sun's shining right down the middle here. And all I did was put white paint and I put dots all around. And also I did make a mistake at first. So I rubbed these out and negative pen because everything was too light. Everything, this was too light and my background uh, and the flower was too light. So I kind of changed that. So I wiped them out, put them back on and you can always wipe out. You know, I always show my students how to do that. And then I put the light coming right down there because that's what happens sometimes when the sun is directly in front of you, which is all I have to do in a scene. And let's see who's all here today. Hey, Jenny, Mary, Marianne, we got Anne, Cindy. I see some new names here. Oh, thanks. We got Evelyn, Maura, Dawn, Patty, Kathy La. Wow. All right. Thanks. I got, we got Roger, Barbara, Sue, and Pamela. And again, thank you again for all the emails. I will get, I'm going to get right at you, all of you, but there were quite a bit. I couldn't believe how many um, came to me. And so I've been kind of busy. I've got a bunch of um, things to do for Dallas Gallery that I'm actually doing right now. But I will definitely answer back to all of your emails and thank you so much for them. So let's get going here. And so I did put soft tape down for um, my masking because when I did it first, that's where I lost it because I lost the light on this. And so I figure I just put um, soft tape on and soft tape is stuff that I hope I makes. It is a small roll. It comes, but it's a very thin tape that you can see through. You see how you see the lines through this tape and it comes out very simply when you heat it. You put a hairdryer on it and then you peel, excuse me, peel it off and it's all good. So that's soft tape. And then instead of using masking fluid, I thought I'd try the mask or the, um, the soft tape today. Either way, work if you if you're working on paper that is soft, then I would recommend that you heat it when you take it off, or use tape like this. Um, that works really well too. Hey, Maria and Renee. Let's. Oh, where's my water? Oh, here it is. <laughs> water buckets way over here. There we go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm also going to show you how to blur I blurred the background if you see right here I blurred the background so that it doesn't show um, much detail at all I want you to get to be do things nowadays so that this was everything was in focus and I decided to blur it out because I've seen so many beautiful painters from um, there were, I think it was either China or Russia Asian artists or Russian artists that been doing some unbelievably beautiful watercolors and they tend to the backgrounds make them so blurry and i love that that soft wet in the wet look and i taught you how to do that so let's do that again so here we go and why do i have this big dark thing right over here it's very dark right there hold on one second hold on sorry about this guys it seems very dark right there <laughs> All right, so we're going to wet the whole surface. And if you're using 140, um, I have a really good um, technique that I learned from going and doing my live classes is that if you're using 140 pound paper and even on a block, take it off the block, 
wet the back and slap it onto a piece of board or anything. Anything will make it, keep it wet and it'll keep it flat, the 140. Just wet the back and you'll make it nice and flat. If you tape it, though, don't tape it. Because if you tape it, that's when it gets all wrinkly because it's, it's a little bit, no place to expand. So if you're using 140, just don't tape it and put it down on the board. Now I'm not going to wet the bottom yet because I'm going to work the top first and um, we'll get down to that part later. And I didn't do the flowers this time, which I did in the first um, this afternoon, but I thought it'd be better to try this way. I'll take a little bit of uh, um, leaf green, which I've added to my um, palette lately. I was doing so many outside things, I didn't want to mix it anymore because I used to mix it with the light blue and the yellow, but it's the same thing as if you use uh, your light yellow your light yellow and your horizon blue. I'm just going in here and I'm going to make this as um, soft edge as I can. And I'm going to show you how to use the hake brush then to soften things up a little bit down up there too. Here's a little bit of blue for the water. That was a little horizon blue. And it's okay if things turn a little green. That's fine. I actually you can tell in this, in this picture that I did change the colors a little bit. They were a little bit... Um, more muted and so I up the the color of that and so here we go with a little bit of let's get these because there's gonna be a little pink in here and so I'm gonna use a little bit of opera and there's a little there's a flower over here right and so opera is a super bright it was actually the first um, crinacridone color that was invented um, by Holbein they made opera first and it was kind of like a um, crinacridone pigment where the pigment really um is super super vibrant almost um almost uh, fluorescent almost and so i'm going to put that in there i'm going to add a little bit of white to it so it's not so vibrant i know the paper does that too you need to do that with the paper and i'm just going to bring it down through here a little bit and you notice i'm not doing the exact look of the flower yet i'm just going up there and putting some of that color in there and let it just bleed in there a little bit. I'll put a little bit into this. That's almost too much water. See, I'm adding too much water here. I gotta stop that because I already put water down first and so I don't need to put water down when I already have water down. So a little bit more of the green, a little bit of more of a, and the dirty green, you just add a little bit of this orange to it. It's more of a dirty green. Because this, this orange has a little bit of yellow into it. So the blue and this orange make a Kind of more of a dirty type greenish color. But a lot of these colors, you know, green are too vibrant for nature. They're not that vibrant in nature. They're very muted, the greens, and they do have a lot of orange. If you ever go looking around, look around at um, at some of the trees with leaves on them. It's, it's amazing how much orange you see in it. And if you want any time to put like that, I haven't got that yet, but let me just let me see if I can make some really hard edges. I'm going to show you how to use the hake brush to get rid of the hard edges that when you're doing some hard edges and you want to kind of blend things together and help it along a little bit. Um, the hake brush is super fun to do that with. Put a little bit of this in here. It just blends things together. And uh, I was talking today that I guess it's like putting makeup on which I have to try one time so I can make sure that it is what I'm saying. <laughs> We're talking about it. It's like, oh, one of these days I got to just try it and see. Um, so when I'm saying that it's like putting makeup on, I know for sure that that's what it feels like. <laughs> and see, we're going to put a little blue in there. Cheryl likes my Chicago paintings. Thanks. Um, I put those out there because, again, I'm trying to get... Um, more popular, I guess, so I can get some of these. Um, I was denied um, some of these um, bigger name places to teach, and um, it was because of my Instagram was too low, and I, and I don't have enough. I'm not popular enough, so I decided, you know what? I gotta put the show people what I do because some of those are old, some of them are newer, some of them are, you know, it, it, my whole selection of all my watercolors that were Chicago. That I've done for many many years and um, nobody knows about them so I decided to start bringing some of them back most of them are sold and um, but 
you know, they're, they're still my paintings. And so people haven't seen those. And so, well, I think if, if, if those people in the big businesses want to see that I actually can paint then and become more popular, I just decided to maybe start showing some of those again. And I can see where they're coming from. I've always thought, you know, it's like, but when it comes to my teaching here, it's never going to change. This is um, my gift to you. And because I was taught like this when I was in school and I had two mentors that gave me everything and they took me under their wings and just taught me everything. And that was Robert Wade and Irving Shapiro. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be teaching here right now. I mean, they really taught me so much, especially Irving Shapiro. Um, I had him as a teacher for many years and he basically gave me everything. He um, you know, gave me his class when I was um, right out of school. And um, I always loved teaching. It was one of those things I wanted to do right out of school. And he said, no, Dave, you, know, you better get a real art job first. <laughs> Figure out how to draw first and stuff. And so that was actually a good, um, really good suggestion of his to not, not just start teaching, but go out there and get a real art job and see how it works. And I, of course, there's Chicago seeds there because I worked in Chicago for many, many years. Um, I worked in Chicago downtown for 35 years actually and uh, I was a storyboard illustrator and I always taught though always had time I always had a Thursday class I actually started the school but well, I actually was a part of the was starting the school at the Pell and Chisel downtown Chicago uh, on the north side and there a little bit and um but see how now I'm putting a lot of pigment in here and just getting that a little bit of my water and I'm just kind of you notice how you don't see any lily pads yet they're all bled, bled together and if you want to soften let's say these edges here you want them a little bit softer you want to blend them together you just wispy really quickly you take this um hate brush that's goat hair and it's really soft and you can just you can manipulate the edges together you can just kind of you know i have to do that up here but i just want to show you <laughs> see i can just manipulate and they'll just kind of float together and um you know, it's a great way if you need a really really smooth edges like really smooth and you can like direct it too. like can go up and down back and forth now I really didn't need to do that there because I needed to have some of the things in there but I just want to show you that you can get things really smooth with a hate brush it's pretty interesting and I just started using this because um, I was doing something where I needed it really smooth and also that I watched um, John Selman's AWS um, video and he was doing that and I think well I gotta try that and it worked great now, but <laughs> that being said, I gotta get this back to looking a little bit more like the like the individual um, lily pads on some places. You know, I just want to have some places. But see how you can go back in. It's still wet. It just helps it to kind of blend some of those colors together. Or you want to make it less vibrant. You can use that hake brush to just take it down a little bit. You know, there's all kinds of things to do that you can do in watercolor, and that's one of them. And um, next week, I'm going to show you, I'm not going to show you today because there's too much in here that we have to still do, but I got a new way, for, a new, a new toy I found and um, somebody told me in Bagley, up in Bagley, I forget who it was, who told me again and um, I never did get a name list from the other, from there. So I forgot some of the names and, um, but one lady had talked to us about how to make these lines with this special tool. It's this tool, and I'll show you it in my newsletter next week. It's a great little tool, the best way to make lines, better than the line or the, um, the everything I've taught you so far about making lines. You're going to love this, the new tool. So stay tuned. Um, I ordered a bunch of them. I can even just, um, I'm probably going to bring them to the thing when I get them, though it would take a month to get here, even though they're on Amazon. I, um, they're probably coming from China <laughs> or something. All right, so there we have, see how it's just like a little grayed out in here and there. So let's go down here and I do these areas and so I'm just gonna wet it as I go along and see how the um, the tape just kind of avoids the um, tape is like, like the masking fluid, but it's tape instead. So now down here, and this is my lily pads are still my light. So what is the first step? Always lights, right? So this is still my first step. Step one is my lights and establishing my colors. Lights and establishing color is always step one. So down here, I drew them a little bit bigger than they are. There's so many here in this picture. I decided to individualize each single um, lily pad and made them their own. 
I wanted them to be their own lily pad and not be together. And But when I paint here, I'm just going to put them all together with the paint, of course. And so I'm going in here and going to again make some of these a little bit greener. And I can go into this area. It's okay because it's lighter. And then I'll put the blue back into that area later. And in class, I did each one of these separate. Or um, I did this first, but then I paint them. I'm going to try to get some of this detail in here now, right from the get-go, so that I have some of the the uh, texture inside them. And boy, the students really taught me that I should be doing that because they did it, and it was really nice looking. So, you know, to get this little texture, this little shadow in here, you can get that in there. Now that's too wet. You know, you can actually tell when something's too wet. You just can't control it. That means there's not enough pigment and too much water. So don't always just keep on going. Then I take a little bit of the water out. See, I can just absorb it back in, get a thirsty brush, wipe it on your towel, and take it up. See, I'm taking the water out again. And then pick up more pure pigment. It's all about how pure the pigment is with no water in your brush. And then um, there's this great shadow right underneath this thing. And learn how to use the pigment thick. And let it do its thing where it's bleeding and it's doing its thing in the water, it's floating, or it's floating, but you also want to get texture. And what's your wash? Again, always, what is your wash? What's your style of doing a wash? Is it spattering? Is it salt? Is it, what makes your wash the best and makes it you? You know, there's a lot of artists that work a certain way and you know it's their work because of how they make their washes or how they make their drawing or how they, what their style is. And so with watercolor, it's all about your style, right? I mean, it's all about how you put this watercolor down onto the paper. And you're always doing it wet and wet, always, except when you want a hard edge, like this around here, if I want to go around it, you know, I would make it a hard edge, I would be dry, right? But I'm not going to do that <laughs> here. So it's all about the washes and how you do your washes. Learn how to do washes um, to look like watercolors. Again, you want to make it look like a watercolor, right? We are watercolorists and we're not, you know, most of the people here are in my class are not hyper-realistic because I'm not teaching that. It's a pretty um, amazing thing that you can spend that much time on something and make it look like a photograph. And that's super awesome um, for them. And I, I, that's not my style. I could never do it because I'm just too impatient for one. And I like doing it this way. This is the way I was taught. This is the way I was taught when I was a student at the American Academy by Irving Shapiro. So. Of course, that's what you, all your, all your learning is what you're going to be, your style is going to be at. It's going to be what you do, what you learn, how you learn it. So if you do want to be a hyper-realist, you shouldn't be here on Thursday nights. You definitely want to, well, you know, when it comes to composition and stuff like that, it's still the same thing. Um, and so, but when it comes to techniques, uh, this is not the way you want to do um, hyper-realism. Not this loose because you're going to make a mess out of everything. <laughs> And it is neat with art that there can be so many different things too. This could be even abstracted. This could be done in gouache. This could be done in acrylic. This can be done in oils and made it thicker. And so there's so many ways of painting and that's just so wonderful. And I want you to just do whatever you want to do. You know, you don't have to follow this along exactly. These colors, you can make the change it a little bit. You can try it even in a different medium. But for watercolor, that's what I'm teaching. Basically watercolor painting. Here's another... Um, See, I'm putting a little texture into these, into these lily pads and the flowers will come last when it dries and hopefully I'll be able to get that tape off of there. And I actually really like this better than the masking fluid because it repels, well, actually Holbein repels pretty good too, because you can see everything, right? It's right on top of the tape, right on top of the tape. Okay, so that's my first big wash. And then, um, like I also said, I'm going to be putting light down this middle thing here. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to come in here with a thirsty brush. I'm going to wipe off my brush. This is actually dry, so this is not going to work up here. But I'm going to put a little bit of this light coming down through the middle here. I'm just going to pick up some light to make it look like the light is shining through this area right here. Oh, I can't do that right now. All right, next will be our water, right? So we go in here with water. And the water, as you can see in the picture right here, let me just... Hold on one second. So the water, which is, where's my pointer? So the water is this area, this area, and this blue, and this is all gonna be dark. This is my dark, and it, it's also blue. 
So either one will make it look different from my light scene. So that's my pattern. So that has to be made dark or blue different from what I already put down there. The pattern you have to follow. It's nothing. You cannot go deviate from that pattern. It is so important. Oh, what's in my beer? Cheers, guys. Cheers. Very citrusy. A bad. And if the ladies who is um, either Christine or Judy, I think, if you're on tonight or if you find, please let me know that was your beer. <laughs> I, I still have a bunch of beers that everybody gave me in my live workshops. And so it's going to be about two months before I get, I drink all through all those. Uh, so now the darks go through the top and I'm going to go using my blues and maybe a little bit of um, peacock blue because it's more of a um, greenish blue. And if I put a little bit of that orange in there, it's even make it greener. And so I'm going to come up here, and I do want them hard edge, but maybe up there I don't need them that hard edge. And this is what I almost already have, and that's damp, so I'm not going to go up there. Over here, let's go down here because that's still damp, and so I can go back up to that area. And so we'll start out with this. You can see my drawing is a little bit different than the photo um, this time, and I because I, I changed things. I made the flowers a little bit bigger. I thought I thought they were a little bit too small for the picture, so I upped them a little bit, and then I. Um, I'll go around this lily pad and I, I made less lily pads and made them bigger too so that they're easier because it was a little bit hard this afternoon to paint them for some reason and so I'm going with a dark blue hard I'm, I'm, I'm wetting as I go along I call that wetting is going along so I don't pre-wet it and I put paint into it I put paint and water in there which is called you know um, painting as you go along but now it's wet and then once it's wet don't be afraid of throwing other colors in there and manipulating it until you have it to where you want it and i know these are going to get about 20 percent lighter so i'm going kind of thick with my paint and i wanted to, and this afternoon i wanted to put more um of water that was moving but really in these ponds they really doesn't move there are no waves or usually there's one a little bit of wave right there see there's a little bit of a wave but not enough to make it like white or something like that. So I'm going to keep that as just solid and make it just a nice, solid, beautiful wash. Now this little um, thing over here. And because it's um, kind of warm underneath and it's still wet, it's going to turn a little bit greener there, right there because, again, I'm um, mixing it on top of a yellow. So you just have to get yourself a little bit more blue and just let it float again this is in the water now and then you can give it um, there's even in the picture there's some you can see inside there but I'm not going to deal with that too much because there's so much going on in this picture already I don't really need to have that Well, hey Maria, great job in yours. I hope you finished it. <laughs> uh, Maria was in my class and um, I used that soft tape, the soft tape that you have, the pink soft tape. You could use that and you can see through it. I cut it with an X-Acto knife because that way um, it maybe won't rip as much. Because the soft tape is usually a really good tape and you heat it with a um, hair dryer when you take it off. I have a heat gun, but it's the same thing. You just So here again, now I'm gonna take the blue, go around here. I didn't think about masking this afternoon because I thought I'd go around it, but really they are the lightest part and you really need to keep that. And so I thought it'd be best to just try to, to mask it. It's always like um, when I'm doing it on Thursday afternoon in the classroom, we are always guinea pigs. We're always trying to do things with it before we, I've never done this painting before. So we always try things. And I tried in, um, doing the hake brush. I was trying to do a couple other things. And Maria was using a board. She was using a um, watercolor board, which is crescent board um, with a strap more paper. And that was a little hard because you couldn't wipe out. It, it, we found out that you really cannot wipe out on that paper, which I really love that fact that I can wipe out on this paper. And see how I made one, two, three, four, instead of how many are there um, up here. If you look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's only four here instead of nine so i just lessened up the the lily pads a little bit because you know there's just so many of them and 
it got annoying. <laughs> and it's harder. It was harder to do. So here we now we're giving ourselves making it a little bit easier using a less a few less um because even the ones that are turned up and really dark in there i don't want to make those dark as dark up here i want it to be pushed back i want this to, the flowers to be our center of interest the thing that you want to see when you first see this picture is i want to see i want to see the um the flowers my my area of interest and that dark up there almost is a little bit too dark I'll try to keep this water up here soft edge because I want you to just disappear. I want it to be soft edge so it looks like it's out of focus. I can also make it not soft edge but just don't have much contrast up here. Eliminating those really dark darks and it does the same thing. Low contrast is just like having a soft edge. I think we've talked about that in Peacock when we did Peacock a couple weeks ago. Now we have to do blue over here. Yeah, I changed the composition a little bit better because there was two, like a, um, or yeah, like we were saying, this one, you know, there was just the composition on this was a lot of water and, that, and small flowers and this up here, you know, there was a lot of negative space and I want to bring up the flowers a little bit bigger things so that it just looks closer up. You know, I think that was just a little bit better composition and Maybe try it again and not on board because you know I'm, I'm I love wiping out a lot of times. I'm also gonna put the stem here. It's funny how always second time around I used to never ever paint a painting uh, twice. It just I hated it, but I've learned to love it because like the first uh, first one is more like a practice. We all practice in class and then. You know, we should all go home and try another one, which I do because I have to do my videos here. Um, and here we're going to go and put a little bit of water up here. Kind of, kind of blend this. Use the hate brush, just kind of wisp it. And you say, just wipe it, wipe it, wipe it soft. Wipe it soft. <laughs> cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. So the fact that I change things a lot too is like I almost want to do that to show you also that you know just because the picture shows a certain way and it looks kind of good in the picture you got to think about what it is that in the painting because it's not a photograph and so you got to make things simpler for yourself and so that's what I do a lot of times is I, I make things simpler for our, us so that it's easier to paint because it is this afternoon it was very hard to paint that one this afternoon there's a lot to do in that and this is a lot less um and so it's just easier and put some shadows in here right away see i can put the shadows right on top of the um right on top of the the lily pads and i already work in my lily pads and they already look like they're the center of interest right and that I didn't have this afternoon. We were all having a problem with that. And unfortunately, that's always the bad thing that when when you're taking my live class, though you do learn a bunch of stuff other than just, you know, what we're doing there. Um, so they're still great. Live classes are still great because I can watch you too. I can, I'm right behind you. And we can just say what it is I need to say and watch you and give you advice. So... go all right let's see if we can take the oh it's really wet let me just i'm gonna have to heat it a little bit here guys and it is so hot in my studio right now i did try to um air condition it a little bit but we're not enough time so let me just let me just um keep this a little bit and see if i can't get this the tape off there real quick and uh, please ask some questions while I'm doing this. <laughs> so about my Zoom, um, I, I've always wanted to do Zoom classes, but I, I did one and everybody was helping me out to see how to do them. And so when I get back, I'm going to be gone for the next two weeks. I'm heading up to, um, heading to Wisconsin 
in a week. Next week, I'll be in Wisconsin. And um, after that, I will be up in Canada. And I'll be up in New York, Clayton, New York. So if you're near Clayton, New York, I will be doing a workshop in Clayton, New York. On the... Okay. Look at my website. You'll find the dates. <laughs> so this is a stripper. Um, thing. You can see it's a, a power stripper. It's not a hair dryer. It's a lot quieter. But you got to watch yourself. <laughs> don't burn the painting. <laughs> and don't make it too close. And I will try to use a... Um, I will use that also to try to get the tape off. So, oh. Oh no, where'd you guys go? <laughs> oh no. Oh, there you are. Shoot. Oh, did you guys go? Did I go? Did I cancel my something here? <laughs> oh no. Here is my. Oh, there we are. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Everything off went off my screen and my screen went blank. Oh. <laughs> Always don't like those things. All right, so let's see if I can't take this. Um, so I have a exacto knife, and I like to take it, use an exacto knife, and I just kind of peel it. I'll peel it off, and I, I put it on low setting, and I just... It really helps the, um, loosen the glue and it doesn't rip the paper. And Stonehenge Aqua is usually very um, very soft paper, so it will rip it. But this is one way you can use it and it won't rip the paper. And it gave me a great, look at the lines I got even, even with just cutting. I just cut, I use this exacto knife and I, I just cut the, around the flower buds or the flower um, petals. Look at that, it comes right off. No problem, no ripping. And so if you're using a soft tape, now if you're using like arches, usually arches doesn't rip at all, so. But if you are having any kind of problem with any kind of tape or masking fluid ripping, use a little heat on it. Not, you don't have to go this um, crazy with heat. <laughs> you just need yourself a hair dryer. Again, I use this one because it's quiet. It's a little bit quieter than a, um, than a hair dryer. And masking fluid, since this is a liquid, it goes into the paper, it may absorb into the paper more than like tape would. Tape is just on the surface and by heating it, it just loosens from the paper instantly. Alright, one more piece of tape and we're all done here. See how fast that was? Ow, it's getting pretty hot. I'm holding it really far back and this thing is so hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry about the noise. So now we have the flower. I can just go in there, and I now I have the great edges, and you actually see it, right? And last time we didn't. We had all soft edges, and we had the negative paint around it. So this is definitely a better way of doing that. And so I recommend that you do do a um, little stencil. Just take it a little bit longer, but it works really well. And so what I'll do now is now I can wet it because I already have my hard edges, so I don't have to worry about that. And so I'll take my big brush and I'll wet it and I'll get the, my light colors in there first. So first I'll get a little bit of of um, opera, which I didn't realize I had until I took off all the paint that was on top of it today in class. And so here I'm just going to dump a little bit of this in there. Now I don't want to get rid of the light on top here. Well, I'm not sure why I did that. It's a little bit lighter on top. Just wet it with pure water. And then um, also drawing with your pencil. When I drew with my pencil, I made sure that I put each petal that was in front in front of the ones in behind. So that it does have to mention. So I mean, you can see right here. There's a couple petals I drew, and I can go over them to show you a little bit more. So there's a petal here, here, and here, 
and that is in front of the ones behind so that it gives it a three-dimensional look and these are coming towards us and so there's another third dimension and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and first wet them and then put the colors I want in there and of course the petals in front will be vibrant more vibrant more colorful and probably more contrasty than the ones behind now the hard edges all the way around it just show that it is the flower that it is right you don't have to identify it because it's already identified by the hard shape and I say that a lot when I'm um, teaching is that with a dark or a light the outer edge is more important than what's on the inside and so th there's times when you're drawing matters when you're painting that's what you would want to do then is make sure that your your edges of the object look really sharp so just wetting it putting my um, my color I want in there and this is like the first wash this is like step one um, of the whole painting but I, I have to do it now because now it's light again so this is just light and so you go light to dark right and in the center of this is usually a little bit of orange like in the center and so I'm putting a little bit of um, little orange in there now this one up here um, it has the lights too so there I have to rub out a little bit so let's see if I can rub out a little bit on that one and how much time do we have okay we got plenty of time well not plenty of time but <laughs> enough time <laughs> So here I'm just going to rub out my light petals because I want them to be soft and this is one way of getting soft petals is I'm just going to rub them out water and a little bit of um, agitation with your brush that's a new word I've been using for um, not scrubbing you don't want to scrub that ruins your paper so agitating it means just to give it a little bit of an agitation by just rubbing back and forth not hard not scrubbing you're not scrubbing you're just agitating it a little bit and then you can take your paper towel, press that on there, pick it up, and you have some white, little white buds. Now, the drawing on this one was not as good because I, I wanted to be soft edge, and so the ones coming out this way, I'm just going to make those dark. I'll make those dark later, or use this pigment right there. And this should be out of focus, right? Because this stuff back here is out of focus, so I don't want that too hard edged. I will get some of this um, pink in there. I'll go underneath here and I'm looking at the photo there's a couple little petals going this way I'll come in underneath the, some of these um, underneath some of the lily pads getting a little shading underneath some of them but very light no darks no dark darks because that'll make my eye go there too much matter of fact it's almost too I don't, too hard an edge I, I want it just to be blurry so let me just blur it out a little bit you just put a tint of color in here too you don't have to put a lot of color in there and just I'm just tinting it here and there I, I want to kind of leave this area for the darks and so I'll leave that I have to dry that okay so let's go down here now and I'm gonna let this dry I do have these um, not really cleanly done so they're not going to the edge some of these washes and so maybe I want to do that a little bit just get a little bit closer to the edge and not be so sloppy they are my center of interest, so I want to. Oh, there's a piece of tape that's still on there. there Get the piece of tape off of there. Oh, I haven't looked to see if there are any questions. Now I'm even covered it with my. Hey, Barbie. Yes, um, my fourth, I didn't do much. <laughs> I, yeah, what did I do? I think I had to cut a lawn, and I had to cut my mom's lawn. So there was not much, and though there was a lot of fireworks all around my neighborhood, they loved their, they loved their fireworks in my neighborhood, boy. I live close to a lake, and boy, all until like 1 o'clock in the morning, there were fireworks going on. Cheers again, everybody. 95. That one, let's see, that for all you guys came late, the beer tonight is this. Right, can you see right there? Hold on one second. I gotta put this over here. I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> so yeah, that's a '95. Oh boy, I almost put poured, poured beer in my painting. <laughs> so um, let's see now. So let's get our let's get our um, darks now. That was our number one wash. Was the number one was lights and lights and um, color. Second wash was our dark mediums, and now we're doing our dark darks, our large darks, and our details at once because these details that are dark and big but they're also are um, detailed there are my large darks but they're detailed too so I'm just gonna go in here get a little bit of violet all right 15 minutes let's, let's do this 
All right, so we're gonna get a really nice dark dark because that's what it is in the photo. And there's nothing better than um, just a really nice dark one wash. No, you know, don't double this. Just get in there, put it down and it can float. But see, I, I'm just gonna put in these, this is reflections. And just see what you see in the photo. Just basically copy that. That's enough to show what it is. And then like anything else, once it's wet, I put other colors in there. I never just leave something one colored. I never do. If there's a if there's a little bit of water, I'll put a little bit of red in there. Here I put a little pink in that because it's reflecting that pink flower above, so why not, right? Just put a little pink in there. I mean it looks probably on your screen like there's just one color dark, but it isn't. If it's if you look really close, it's pretty dark and, and I'm getting these getting the petals to look like maybe they're reflecting from up there. And then this one, I'm just going to make it really skinny right there and I'll go wider over here on because um, I don't want to, it's, I don't want to get really thick right there to connect that. So I'll go down this way, make it thicker down here. And then do I go up into this one a little bit? I maybe put a little bit of a shadow here on this one off the side and right here, really dark. And I can even make it look a little wavy if I want. I tried it, it didn't work on my other one this afternoon, but let's see if uh, maybe this will work on this one. A little bit of blue in here. See, it's just um, reflections I'm underneath the underneath the. Let's see, this is a reflection of, well, that's a stem. And then there's a, there's the shadow, or actually it's not a shadow, it's a reflection. Actually, this does have a shadow and a reflection really, because the, the reflection is of the flower, right? The flower is reflected into the, into the pond with a dark. And then there's a shadow that's also on top of the, on top of the lily pads. I'm wondering why I'm having such a hard time remembering lily pads. <laughs> so then we go over here. And the lily pads, I'm going to also go back into them and get them a little bit more textury. Right now, they're not very textury. And again, a little bit of this pink into the dark here. Again, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there are pinks in there. A little dark in here. I'll make this a shadowy, kind of shadowed out a little bit. And you can make things a little bit sh more shadow also by just kind of going over them with a little bit of a, a tint of color. You don't have to go really thick with it. Go a little bit watery, more watery. Up here, same thing. I go a little bit darker. I gotta hurry up here a little bit, I think. A couple of ways maybe. There's not many ways in this. It just really is calm, you know, so I don't want to get too many waves. And then up here a little bit, a few places. I like getting a little bit of this orange on top of this, on top of these, um, to show shadowing and also texture. Texturing shadow. I usually have those slits in it. I do like this what I got here, but that was soft edge. So sometimes I have to wait till this is dry and then go back in with some water. See, I'll put some water right here and I'll get it to be soft edge instead of hard edged. And that way you can get that, that soft edge look, but they also get texture. And that's with thicker paint. Always remember thicker paint if you want it to be textury and you want to show more pigment in that area. And so it doesn't bleed all out. Same thing here, I'll just do a little bit more texture. I'll wet it and I'll just get a little more texture. The lily pads, if you look at the picture, they're they're like really textury and there's a lot of things happening in them. So 
You can put that in either hard edge like this and then wet it or do it in the beginning. Do it like I did both ways. It doesn't really matter when you do it. You can put a little texture in there. This one is not very green, so let's get a little bit more green in here. Make it look more like a, look at this little cute one here. This one's happily in the water, so what do you do with that? You put a little bit of a, like a reflection of blue, like it's going underneath the water a little bit. And then you have some of the color of the water in there. And it's got to be a nice little transition like this water. Does that look good? No, that doesn't look good. Let's just make it, let's just make it textury. You do what you may have to do to make it look good. If it's texture, and if you don't know, try it and then wipe it off if you don't like it. You know, because sometimes I don't know myself, like this afternoon, you just try things and I try things with the flowers and it didn't work. And what I do, I wipe them out and try them again. So this one right here, I'll wet this a little bit. So I want soft edges. Wet it when you want soft edges. Hard edges, you keep it dry. That you all know, that's, um, I'm so happy that people know that. It's just one of the things, wet into wet works really well. And then you have to know how to create edges. And if you're ever taking one of my classes, that's the first thing you learn. You have to know that. You, you can't go farther until you know that. And most of the people that are here, I'm sure know that now. To just be able to work wet into wet and get soft edges, you need more paint. You need more paint to make it stop and not float all over the place. It's gonna be a soft edge, but it will not, it's not gonna, um, it'll be exactly what you want it to be. It'll, you can draw that way. Now these shadows in here should be a little bit darker. Wow, it's hot in here. I better drink some more beer. <laughs> right now with the flowers, um, I'm looking at the picture and so next level what you do is you get the next level of the petals and then I'm gonna do the ones that are a little bit darker in the front so I'm gonna come up here and take some of my some of the pink and I'm just gonna kind of go in here and I'm just kind of making those petals darker See, I'm just gonna make those darker because they come forward And also you can direct the sunlight, which way is the sun coming? You can always mix shadows from like underneath here. This one is lighter. And then these will be a little bit lighter. And maybe I'll put a little bit orange into them also. And then what I'll do is for them, I'll make them nice hard edged and I'll just kind of go in front here. So they're a little bit in front, a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna lighten them up a little bit. And there's this one that's kind of foreshortened right at you. And then these are like really, really dark. I'll take a little bit of alizarin in here and go underneath there, underneath the bottom part of these and make that a little bit darker, like it's going up in there. And so alizarin crimson can be really dark in here. Show that they're going under. And same thing with this one. Um, and this time I'm just going to start with the dark right away. Just put a dark underneath there. Put a little bit more red ones here. And these can be a little bit lighter. More orange. Um, Anne asks, could you tell us again the brand name of the tape? It's called Holbein Soft Tape. Look it up on um, like Jerry's Artorama, uh, Blix. It's called Soft Tape by Holbein. Holbein, you don't have to even put a Holbein, just put in Soft Tape. Soft as in not hard. <laughs> soft Tape. And it's about six bucks, I think, six bucks. Yeah, you can get it in four different sizes, width. There's like one inch, half inch, um, one and a half inches, two inches. So there's different sizes you can get. 
And now I'm going to do the same thing with the darks over here. How much time do I have left? Five minutes. Uh oh. Let's go really quickly with this one. And I'm going to put in the white paint so you can see what I'm doing with the white paint. And we'll be done. And then let's get a little bit of dark, dark blue up here. Plenty of time. Just get this in here. Get some darks going up there. I, again, don't want to do too much up there because, again, that's that's out of focus. I want to keep that out of focus enough so that you look down at the flowers. I mean, you can put some detail up here, but not too much contrast, not too much bright colors. And I can mess it up here a little bit. I can just kind of go up there and just put a little bit of stuff in there just to maybe negative paint this a little bit more. All right, and so about the making light, making light, not making light of your painting, but putting a light in your painting, is that um, what I like to do is I like to make it look more dramatic than what it is. I always like to bring in things into a painting to make it dramatic so it doesn't look like your everyday just oh there's a nice painting yeah okay it's a light nice light i want to be better than the just the right average light i want it to be dramatic in some way so that it looks like like something different something that is, hasn't been done before you know a different kind of look to it and so i like to make like night scenes i like to do um when the sun's out and so what i do now is i'm going to take white paint i'm just going to take pure white paint and to get white paint in here, I should have two things of white, one for mixing and one for just using pure. And um, once I get my palette going here, I'm going to have that. And so right down here, I'm going to have the sun heading right through here. And so I'm going to make things that are wet have little dots on them. Because when things are wet, you look, look at this up sometime when you're on the lake and stuff and then the light's out or the, light, the sun is out and um, it's hitting angles of things and when things are wet they sparkle they sparkle because you're getting you're hitting it with the sun and it's wet it's like a mirror then and the mirror shines that sun into your eye and so right down the middle here i'm just going to put a bunch of white because right down here is going to be if the sun is hitting this area and it's not in the photo i know it's not in the photo and you're wondering like how is he knowing what where to put it and it's because i know how to do this but i've seen it i went out there and looked at it and anytime the sun is right in front of you in front of you and it sparkles on the water because the water is wet and it acts like a mirror and if it's moving the water then it's actually definitely have a million little sparkles here it wouldn't be as you know move it's not moving that much so you're getting more of the, just an area of light through here that is saying that yes the sun is reflecting off this water into your eye and um so down here, just gonna put some water, and it's dry brush even right down here. I'll make a little dry brush. That's fine. Or there's a little bit of water, and it just gives things a sparkle. I didn't use my rigger brush. That's where you get dots from. And these lily pads sometimes they get wet because birds fly on them. Oh, it's a bit too much water. So I'm just gonna take a little bit thicker, and then where it hits, like where parts are on the edges of things, that's where you get things looking on the edge. You get little dots. There are sparkles. They're not dots. They're sparkles. And next week, when you see my new tool making lines, it also makes dots. It's a super cool little tool you'll see next week newsletter. So if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, definitely sign up for it. You'll see what I'm talking about next Tuesday. Here I'm just going to put that down a little bit because I don't want that too bright. I do like this little light right here. So watch this. I'm just going to take that. Take my ugly brush. I mean the, um, and I'm just softening it into the into the putting it into the paper. John Lovett does this. He puts it like this, and then he just uses his, his brush, his um, goat hair brush, a hate brush, and then just softens it. Puts it right into there. Put it more here. I just feel it gives a little bit more oomph. The painting it makes it just just slightly more dramatic and gives it just that dramatic look and maybe in here just a little light in there and no this is 
is not cheating. Don't worry about it. It's fine that I'm using white paint. I'm using titanium white. Now I'll go back and put some more dots in there, here and there. I'm not sure why I'm doing it with that brush. A square brush doesn't make dots. A round brush makes dots. <laughs> It sparkle. And so I will post this to this painting and so you can see what I did to the picture. You know, so the it's not in this these things are not in the picture, not in the photo. But you can look at my um, painting. I will post it on Facebook and on my Facebook group and then you can see it there. dots and oh we're two two minutes over already sorry about that guys wasn't watching all right I set the tape off and we're done for today so hopefully you like this one let me see what you guys can do with it uh, hold on one second this up here looks kind of boring I gotta put a little bit of color in there sorry I go over a little bit I'm gonna put a little bit of color I just need some some I need something to happen up here that doesn't look it looks kind of boring and so I'm just going to post, post a little color in there and just let it be a little bit more dramatic in color. I always, you know, I'll see it tomorrow and I may think of something else, but, um, you know, I always look at it in a different light, a different, um, take it, put it away for a little bit and see how you like it. Cause you can always change things and make this a little bit darker. Okay, now we're way over. Okay, good. Good, good. I had to do that. Sorry, guys. I had to do that. We're a little bit over, but it's all good. Let's take the tape off. <laughs> right, let's put this on here. Thanks, Roger, Kathy, Barbie. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by, watching it. And let me show you the difference between this afternoon and tonight. So a little bit bigger flower, a little bit more, um, you know, they're both okay. I actually kind of like what I did back here with the softness. Not too bad here. I mean, it's still not wet, but um, all right, there you have it. So next week, I will be at the Plymouth Arts Center, and there I'll be doing the Thursday night at the Arts Center. So if you're in that area, drop by and you can watch me do it live the Thursday night. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but I'm sure it'll be great, right? All right. Until next week, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.